Hello, I'm Elaine Collins and uh, this is my garden. It's been a wonderful growing season, but it's been, because I have such a big property, it doesn't get a lot of care. So, nature is very beautiful though. Hydrangea is one of the beautiful blooms right now. This is an unusual spirea in that it has pink, white, and uh, deep red blooms on it. It's a, actually a tricolor spirea. This is a yellow bark dogwood that I plant in smut. Looks more green right now, but it does turn yellow. The lilies seem to have suffered worse from the hot, dry weather, and my 70-pound dog doesn't help chasing chipmunks. Okay, and this is uh, bergamot, which I put everywhere because it smells so wonderful. And I also use the leaves for tea. And we have our brown-eyed Susans, which seem to populate wherever they like. <clears throat> My flocks are about to come here. I can see them in bud in the center. And this, of course, is a Solomon seal. And it's beautiful foliage. I have a burning bush in the center, this big one, and a Forsythia on the right. And this is a self-planted honeysuckle. <laughs> right. Here I have uh, these, this is, this is a fairly new bed with a couple of spireas on either side. The birds love it. This is also hydrangea. Yes, this is a hydrangea. Uh, just <clears throat> let me for a moment. Okay. And then I decided to just have a bit of color here. <clears throat> what gardeners always do. A high bush cranberry that I planted a few years ago. Lots of bergamot. And of course I have lots of hostas. The hostas are great at the edge of the garden because I don't have to trim. My John Deere just goes along, tucks under the leaves and uh, grass doesn't grow, so it's very nice. Alrighty, and really it's just, <laughs> there, there are lots of hostas, um, it, it's all green this time of year pretty much. This is loose, uh, gooseneck loose strife, which is another perennial. Um, a garden this big you rely on perennials, and <clears throat> all through the undergrowth is a yellow flowering lamium. Now, something that has suffered this summer is my peony tree back here. You can see it's <laughs> probably in need of water. <laughs> this is mint. This used to be my herb garden before I had a vegetable garden and put it out there. But I still have some bits. More bergamot. Um, I think that's a spearmint. This is garlic chives. And lemon balm, yes. Yes, that's what this is. Sure. Yeah, pretty hard to kill. It loves to spread. <laughs> okay. And <clears throat> this area um, used to be a great slope off our septic bed. And when my husband nearly rolled the tractor on it, it became a garden. <laughs> So these are all forsythias behind, which you wouldn't think would flower under the trees. Took about five years, but they just started blooming gloriously last year. So that whole back row is um, forsythia. Farther along, I have peonies. The 
nice thing about having forest around you is you just <laughs> throw your clippings or branches into the woods. This hasn't done terribly well here, but it's, um, it's a blue spruce and it's keeping maples and whatever from growing forward. That is some in substance and it's surprisingly yellow for this shade. Doing what gardeners do. This is the back of that center bed. You can see how big the burning bush is. <laughs> I brought this from Toronto. Believe it or not. We've been here 16 years now. And these are just natural honeysuckle. There are white and pink and yellow and, and the white ones turn yellow as they fade. Alrighty, so we walk around to the front. Okay, so I have shrubs up against the parging because this was all gray in front and I really didn't like it. So these nice things climb up the walls and hide it so you can focus on the flowers in front. Um, the flocks have not done well this year. I mean, they've been flattened because of the dryness probably because I don't water. Uh, I've only watered a couple of times this year. The cone flowers are really early. These are beautiful, but they don't normally flower till the end of August, beginning of September. And they're normally a prize winner for me because they don't have, they're later because it only gets a few hours of sun. This is another peony tree, which hasn't <laughs> suffered from the dryness. And these geraniums I got from Joan. Many of the plants I bought, I bought at the plant sale. Now this is a white lamium. This is its purple friend, purple palace. And I have sad little uh, alley, um, what are they? It still begins with A. Uh, a still be? A still be, yes, I know it began with A. <laughs> These have really suffered from, from bugs. It's been so dry, bugs have to get their moisture from something and they they do like my hostas in some varieties. This is a nice peony. And this phlox is doing nicely. I got that from my daughter, from her first house. Get me there. And in the summertime, I bring my house plants outdoors. It, I think it makes them stronger if they survive if I don't forget them. I made the mistake of planting um, these in the garden and of course I forgot them because they were just more green. So I'm leaving them in the pots now. Uh, this is a holly bush and this is painted fern. This is wild ginger and it just <laughs> started this year. I had colt's foot underneath it and then this popped up and I've pulled it back this is a Phoebe. I bought it last year at Canadian Tire. You're supposed to plant it close to your walkways because it has a beautiful aroma when it flowers. And there's a chipmunk. Those that eat my are annuals. <laughs> so there's another house plant, a spider plant that I brought outside. A couple of ferns. And this is philodendron and English ivy. That was a pot I bought to stage my daughter's house to sell. <laughs> and then we get to my pond garden. The pond was here when we bought the house, but I've landscaped it quite differently. It had the rocks that are in the well, just off the driveway. Um, I hauled these big native rocks out of the woods and I, I prefer it looking more native. 
my dog has been chasing chipmunks. So, again, we have my hostas. This is, um, I always forget the name. Um, is it Virginia? Yes. And it um, has pink flowers in the spring. And these leaves are quite nice for floral arrangements. If they're too big, you just cut them down to size or in a big arrangement. They're, uh, they're very nice for a change of color and texture. And I have lots of different kinds of hostas, which are also great in floral arrangements. They will last longer than anything else in the arrangement. These in the water are yellow iris. It's possible that these are the native fleur-de-lis iris from France. They're small, yellow, and trilobed. I, I asked Cliff what they were and he didn't know, so I looked it up and that was the only one that I could find that was close in description. So it's kind of nice. So it's mostly hostas here because we're under the trees. This is Archangel. It's um, a lamium, but it's not invasive. It stays in nice little mound. And Pulmonaria. Love the shade. First thing to flower in the spring with pinky purple flowers. Very nice. And this is Vinca, which has nice purpley blue flowers in the spring. Different color hostas to I like the white in hostas in, on, in this dark area because it grabs the light so it pulls your eye farther up, up, up into the woods. Uh, in the pond, that is arrowhead that's sticking up and um, <laughs> water lilies, water lilies. Some of the ferns that have popped up in the garden are just native, they've seeded themselves. This is another area of um, milkweed and something's feeding on it, so yeah, <laughs> I leave it. That's another lime colored uh, spirea, shows up very nicely. The new growth is lime green. That big thing is another elder that planted itself that I want removed. <laughs> it just hasn't been convenient to do it yet. This, I, this iris is a purple um, uh, Siberian iris. And it likes it here. I also have some down by the road that gets a lot more sun. They both flower. This bush is called Dutsia. It has, and the, the species is Canterbury bells. Its branches are covered in these tiny white bell flowers. Beautiful in this flower. I couldn't get anything to grow here because of the bird feeder. There was so much traffic with uh, chipmunks and squirrels and birds. But these were tough enough to survive, so I, I, did, I made two of them. Uh, this is um, normally this big. It's, it's normally five feet tall. It's been so dry this year, it hasn't done well. But it, it grows beautifully in, in shade. And I see it's got some small flowers. is um, deadly nightshade. Don't want that in the garden. Um, this very sad looking plant is um, pink flowers, bleeding heart. Yes, bleeding heart. And I have some astilbies in here, but I moved them across to there because they were being crowded out. So mostly I just have pastas and um, 
so great. Pink Brilliant is the name. See them? Yeah, oh, it's the see them. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a, yeah. Okay, nothing. And more of my Solomon seal. And there's a little wild orchid. I mean, those, they never grow where you want them to. <laughs> so this is partly wild, partly my planting. Pasta, and you can see one of my little baby spirea is growing up there. And for the plant sale, I put extra pulmonary area here, or I can, so I can just dig them up. But they will grow in the path. They will grow everywhere in, in shade. You can see there's some here, just that planted themselves. I leave the wood violets, which you see everywhere because the deer love them. They, they will come out of the woods and in one day, they will just mow the uh, wood violet. So I like to leave it native. I like to see the deer. All right, if you want to look at the other side of the path. You can see just at your feet, we have chives and basil, so they're close to the kitchen. <laughs> my, my herb garden is down near the road. And you can see, I re they really do grow everywhere, the pool and area down in the well. This is uh, June Taylor. I don't know why I remember this one in particular. But that's uh, that variety of pasta. So I have sedums here, pastas, clematis, which did do well, but it's died right back because of the dryness. I think this is epimedium. I just planted it this year. Can't leave the sign anymore. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Yes, epimedium. Yes. And what else I have in here? These are lovely little lilies that are lilies, not lilies, iris. These are iris. And they grow in patches on very long stems, like a star shape. They'll have a root in the center and they'll grow out from that. And they have a surprisingly big white flower early spring. And what happens with the mulch of leaves on the garden, I was able to pick up a foot round piece to give to Pam. <laughs> it's, it's, they don't go deep at all. They're, they have very shallow roots. But it's, uh, just, it's different from any other iris I've seen. And I got those from Carolyn, Carolyn Scott. This is uh, a ground cover, Japanese spurge. And I'm forgetting what this is. This is relatively new to my garden. And it's one that self-seeds. There's a little purple one just by your foot. So coleus is a lovely shade plant. Um, in front I have some tiny mouse ears and church mouse uh, hostas. They're really, really tiny ones. And also coral bells. And this is a this is a Jack Frost, whatever it is, for her. Yes, and it has uh, corn blue cornflower blue flowers. So some of these is still these are really quite tall. When I first shifted them over, I had the tall ones in front and the short ones in the back. So I shifted them last year. So that's pretty much it for the pond garden. Shall we walk down to the front? Mm -hmm. okay. The plan for this garden was to make it easier for me as I got older, having shrubs, which were small initially, because these are huge flower beds, and 
eventually they would fill in and I would have to plant less. I keep planting more, that's the problem. Um, uh, Stelladora lilies. My aunt gave me, she had them one year, they flowered beautifully and the next year they didn't, so she got rid of them. <laughs> she didn't know enough to fertilize them. Anyway, I made six clumps, I think. So I put three, three, and three on both sides of the driveway. And now they're enormous and I've given many away. These are mallow. Um, I'm not sure what that is, but it's variegated so it makes a, a change. I have lots of day lilies and lupins. I got some yucca from my neighbors, so I have a couple of those. And my cone flowers are buried at the back. Oh, and I can see the obedient plant at the back has just come out. Um, I see some unwanted golden rods in front of the tree. Ah, uh, yarrow. More uh, Monarda. Um, this is this is a very invasive daisy of which I used to have a lot. Uh, it's um, one of those sun sunflower variety. I do like my lilies, and I'm very happy there have been no lily beetles this year. That's what that purple one is. And the tall one just behind it is uh, a weedy plant. This is nice here. And this is the yellow. It's a pale pink yellow. You can only see it in the young blooms though. Again, lilies and the Veronica at the back. of the garden um, looks best right now. Um, the liatris are actually half the size they normally are, maybe because of the dry. Um, Daylilies, Shasta daisies, and in behind there are cone flowers. This is another one of my spirea and they really don't do so well out here because there's winter wind and too much sun. They seem to prefer part shade. But I'm getting some little babies from it, so I will be growing more, more of them elsewhere. These are my beautiful stargazer lilies. This is the best they've done. And again, no lily beetles. I love it. This small oval leaf plant is um, salvia. So, blue flowers. It's a little crowded out right now. But, and of course I have my geraniums which I will mm -hmm. Yeah, the geraniums haven't done too well because I haven't been able to water them. Uh, these are um, Tradescantia. They take up a lot of real estate, but I actually have three different colors. They come in deep purple, mauve, and I think the other one is pink. And this is my only reticulated lily. It means the leaves fold backward, the petals fold backward. Neck loose drape, which has spread into the shrub. But there's a, a bit of a view. And this is a hosta. I need to move out. It's very here. These are the Siberian iris, the purple Siberian iris. With the odd gold rod. And this is um, willow, and, and this is fireweed. This is a this is a normal um, wild plant. 
which is known for growing after forest fire. That's why it's called fireweed. <laughs> it's very pretty. Well, thank you for coming to share my garden. Uh, successes and failures. <laughs> um, I enjoy the color and I, I love gardening. So I hope you enjoy it too.